The Last of Us Part 2 has many missable stories. One that hit me from a playthrough is the story of Paige and her partner Simon. Towards the start of Seattle Day 2, passing through a mini supermarket, you could easily keep heading south on Route 5 and miss what looks like an old office building with letters missing above the front door. On closer inspection, the doors have been broken down, lying bent and buckled with the glass hanging on like jagged teeth. Moving through the foyer, you discover graffiti that looks to be written in blood, the seraphite symbol with feel her love scrawled over the wall. Hanging ominously from the above balcony is a noose with nothing attached to it. Moving closer in, the body is lying on the floor, with its head detached. Cloth is missing from the abdomen area, leading you to believe that this was a truly violent act. Moving through this area and climbing up the lift shaft, you later use this noose that was hanging from the balcony to gain access to the room that is barred off from the inside. Upon entering a locked off room, you notice a whiteboard in the corner. Written on it are various things that are needed. Bandages at the top, crossed out, painkillers, vitamins, antacids, thermometer, and finally crossed out at the bottom, pillows. On the right side, somebody's been keeping tallies with the amount of days they've been in the room or this area. Walking around the room past the main conference table in the centre you notice three sleeping bags on top of the sofas that run along the far side wall. You can tell by the clothes that are hanging up and the rubbish that's stuffed under the table that people have been here for a while surviving. Eventually you stumble across a note on the floor. It reads, Simon, I hope you never read this note. I hope I can crumple it up and burn it when you return for us. It's been... I don't even know how many hours since you left. I went out for a look for you, and these hooded people spotted me and shouted at me and called me a sinner and started shooting. I ran back and barricaded the door, and all I can hear is the rain, but I'm worried that they're still out there. Should I run? Should I stay? I feel completely paralysed. I'm sorry I got so sick. I'm sorry I let you go to the hospital by yourself. I'm sorry I didn't stay hidden like you told me. If anything happens to me, I want you to know how much I love you. Please come back. I'm so scared. Man. Paige. Later on, you stumble up a wall and see the hospital in the distance that Simon was heading to. And now you as well. And the hospital's there. Cut through the park. Eventually, you find yourself moving through an apartment building. Climbing up the outer fire escape, you can smash through a window. There, you find Simon on the floor with blood surrounding him. He's been there a while. If anyone finds this note, my wife Paige is waiting for me back at the old conference centre at Pike and Convention, right across from the Peru pub. Please take this medicine. She is pregnant and could die without it. I thought I could make it, but I've lost too much blood. I was sprinting through the woods, heard some whistles, and an arrow pierced my side. I ducked into this place. Think I'm safe. Can't get any worse, right? Starting to feel cold. Stole all this medicine from the hospital. Should have grabbed some blood too. Bad joke. Never mind, she'll tell you. I'm always making bad jokes. If you find Paige, tell her I went peacefully. Tell her I hope they live happy lives. Tell her I love her. And tell her if it's a boy, 
Don't name the kid after me. Go with the name we picked. Simon Vickers. The Last of Us Part 2 is full of stories like this that you could easily miss while playing through the main story. This one reminded me a little bit of Ish's story in the sewers in The Last of Us Part 1, where as you traverse through the sewers you find an interesting story that eventually ends in tragedy, which is similar to how this one's ended. <laughs> 